Hey, what's up, everyone? Welcome to another episode of Spitting Venom, aka the Venom Vlog. And this week, we're continuing our Marvel Tsunami Venom 2003 to 2004 run, written by Daniel Way, with different artists on each book. And so, the first one we talked about was Shiver, which was in the last episode, and that was drawn by Francisco Herrera, who I think overall did a good job. But as far as tone-wise for horror, he wasn't consistent for me because of his style, but I still liked it overall. So if you want to check out that episode, please go back and check it out. And today's episode is going to actually be the book we're talking about is called Run. It's the second arc of this book. It's issues six through 10 of this Venom run. And uh, and it's called Run and it's drawn by Paco Medina. And for those out there who don't want any more spoilers, because I know we set up a good mystery and shiver. If you want to read this for yourself, definitely go to Comixology and pick them up uh, there. I think they're on sale. I know there's a Venom sale going on right now, but even if not, like like these things are worth it. This, you know, this run, in my opinion, is very worth it. And there's a lot of twists and turns coming up. And if you don't want them spoiled, you know, I don't want to spoil them for you. If you don't care, that's cool. Definitely hang out with us and watch these episodes. Uh, they will reprint this in like physical form later this year when the movie comes out. And they're going to put all 18 issues in one book called Daniel Way, The Ultimate Collection of Venom. So yeah, definitely be on the lookout for that. And I think you can pre-order that on Amazon now. But if you want to read them in current form, you can definitely pick up the Comixology versions or on Amazon Kindle as well. All right, so let's dive into Run, the second you know arc of this storyline. Uh, where we last left, Patricia Robertson was knocked out by the guy named The Suit, and he is like this you know alien entity from outer space. He's a, a bunch of nanobites. We don't know where he came from or what brought him here. We just know that his mission is to destroy this symbiote in particular because it is very different than the Eddie Brock symbiote. This one is way more unstable. It's more unnatural, uh, and we're going to find out all the reasons why this suit wants to destroy the alien symbiote or at least this version of it, and we're going to find out where it comes from in the next arc called Patterns. But for here, we're going to get more clues, definitely. And we're also going to, you know, see one of our favorite Canadian superheroes, Wolverine. So I'm very excited to dive into this. Uh, where the book starts, it's, you know, Patricia Robertson, she's knocked out. She's on the suit's back, like he's carrying her to this new location. And they're about 70 miles away from the location they were in the first book, which was Christmas Town and the Ararat facility. Um, so they're about 70 miles away from there, and they're nearing a city called Boise, which is in the, the northwest, I think. And, uh, and so the, as they're getting near, she wakes up, and he's like, hey, look, calm down. You know, I, I kept you alive. I have some food here. He had, like, some canned food that he took from her facility. He's like, you know, we're about 70 miles away. But, uh, you know, we got to track this this alien symbiote. We got to find it uh, before it reaches this town. And if it does reach the town, we got to quarantine this place big time. And I'm going to need your help. And you're kind of part of my plan now. So if you could just, you know, bear with me. You know, we have a lot to go through. And she's like, no, like, we need to call the authorities. We need to call someone bigger, like the Avengers or something. Like, we can't deal with this on our own. And he's like, oh, fine. So he knocks her out again, <laughs> picks her up, and he's like, all right. Let's just bring her to town. She's still part of my plan. Uh, but if she's not, you know, if she's not going to come willingly, I got to bring her, unfortunately. Uh, so, you know, the fate of, you know, humanity, in a sense, uh, rests at this. And as he's carrying her, he looks up and he sees like an alien spaceship. We're not an alien spaceship, but a spaceship in general. And it kind of is cloaked. But because he's like a nanotech robot, he can kind of sense it. So he camouflages himself and, uh, and Patricia and they hide like behind a tree just as extra cover. But he's looking up and he's seeing the ship fly overhead. And at this point, we get introduced to two new characters named Vic and Frankie, these two women that are dressed in like super gear and they're just ready for action and they're uh, they're being sent here to track down the alien symbiote and capture it alive. Uh, so obviously they're in direct, you know, uh, conflict with the suit. He wants to destroy the alien symbiote because he knows it's harmful. These people want to collect it. They're like the, you know, Waylon yutani group uh, in Aliens and he's like, all right, so they're, you know, basically he calls his headquarters he's like, look, Someone else is here, they're looking for the suit, and I don't think they're here to destroy it. He's like, so, you know, I don't have a lot of time. And, you know, whoever he's talking to is like, all right, you know, if you need backup, let us know. And he's like, no, I got this for now, just, you know, stand by. So then he heads into town, uh, or getting nearer town uh, with Patricia while the ship is, you know, getting there as well. Meanwhile, Venom is also nearing the town. He rode in on a crow, so like, you know, back uh, where the suit was, he found Ivan, the dog that was, you know, lived at the end of the last book um, that Venom was riding. And now Venom is loose again. He's on other animals. He rode in on a crow and landed near a house. And so you see this dead crow outside of a house and then this guy walking into the house and he's there for his weekly card game with his friends. And so when he walks in, the guys are like, hey, yeah, come on in, dude. And, he, and you get the guy's like, all right, sorry, I'm late, you know, uh, you know, work or whatever. So he comes in and the whole house, everyone's dead. 
And he's like, oh, crap. And then the guy who invited him in is like, yeah, buddy. And he turns into Venom. And he's like, I need a new host now. And he jumps on uh, the new guy. And so that new guy then gets on his, like, car in his car and drives back to town. Uh, but as as he's heading into town, we cut to a bar where um, Vic and Frankie show up. And they're anticipating the arrival of Venom. And they kind of know, all right, we're, we're following its patterns. We're seeing where it's going. We know it's going to end up in this town, so let's just hang out here and set up camp. Let's go to the bar and ask any locals if they see anything weird. And so when they get there and they're asking, you know, around, uh, they attract the attention of Wolverine, who stands up and is like, hey, you girls aren't from around here, are you? And they look over and they go, how do you know? And he goes, eh, I have a nose for these kind of things, you know? And so he immediately makes his presence known. And the girls kind of know who Wolverine is, but obviously he doesn't know who they are, but he can kind of smell some things up with them. So he decides to keep an eye on them. And the next morning we go to a, a little cafe and that's where Venom has showed up. He shows up and he's like sitting at the little, you know, table there at the diner and uh, the, the lady who runs the joint and she's like the head chef lady, she and the waitress, she's like coming over and like taking orders. And she's like, hey, what can I get you guys? And Venom's like, yeah, what I want isn't on your menu. And then the guy who Venom is, you know, the, you know bonded to, he turns into Venom and he starts jumping from person to person, eating them and sucking them dry immediately and uh, scaring everyone off. You know, a couple people get out, the, the head chef lady, waitress lady, she runs out the back door. And as she's running away, we, you know, cut to outside where Frankie and Vic are set up and they have their sniper rifles and they're basically picking off humans because every human that's around is a chance for Venom to feed. And they have a plan. They want to lure Venom to them and make Venom bond with them for a specific reason. So they're trying to eliminate all the other hosts and any chance that Venom could, you know, use to get away. So as the woman's running, they line her up in their head, you know, their shot, and they're like, all right, here we go, and they're getting ready to shoot her, but then Wolverine intervenes. He's been following the ladies since the night before, and he intervenes. He's like, yeah, I knew you guys were trouble. So he shows up, you know, slices their guns apart, starts fighting with them, and then Venom makes himself known, and he sees Wolverine. And Wolverine turns and goes, whoa, and he's like, Eddie Brock? And he's like, he's like, no, we're not Eddie. And he's like, wait, and he's like, smells him. He's like, yeah, you're not Eddie. He's like, what are you? And he goes, I don't know, but we know what you are, and we remember, we kind of remember what you are, so uh, we want to bond with you, because with your healing factor, you, we can keep feeding off you left and right, and you'll never dry out. And if you do, you'll give us plenty of time to find someone else like you to bond with as well. So Wolverine now has become like the top menu, uh, the top item on the menu. He is the number one steak in the house and venom wants a bite big time so he's heading right to you know wolverine and wolverine's clawing and trying to keep him away and he's not having any luck at all as this battle ensues the suit shows up with patricia he lays her down and he's like all right i gotta get involved with this and so he goes over he takes his phone which you know his phone becomes a big plot device in this not only does it send transmissions and sends you know communications back to his headquarters or whoever he's talking to uh, it also can be configured into like a massive laser gun or something that could hurt venom or you know stun people and knock them unconscious like he did with Patricia. So it's used for everything. So when he sees the suit trying to bond with Venom, or, or the, when he sees Venom trying to bond with Wolverine, he uses his phone on Wolverine and fries him and basically melts off most of his skin. And Wolverine drops to the ground and the, you know, Venom is like, what the hell? And he's like, yeah, he's like, well, I knew you needed that, you know, host. So I rendered him useless. And then Venom's like, yeah, don't worry. He'll heal though. And, uh, and then as he's saying this, like Vicky and, and, um, and uh, Frankie or Vic and Frankie show up and he and Venom's like getting ready to bond with them and the suit actually says no don't bond with them they want you to bond with them uh, look at their necks they're wearing a, a collar a special collar and if you bond with them they will be in complete control of you and they're like dude what the hell so they start shooting at the suit and they're like hey you know like no don't listen to him he's lying like come to us like bond with us we're your only chance to get out of here and Venom's like you know kind of sensing them and like smelling them and like you know hovering around them and he's like no, he's right. There's something up with that collar. And so he's like, I need another host. And just as he's saying that, the old man, uh, one of the old men from the diner that was there earlier comes out. And Venom's like, eh, he'll do. So he, there's this great sequence. Paco Medina, I think, did a great job here where Vic aims a gun and shoots at the old man to try to kill him before Venom can bond with him. And the bullet's flying and the Venom suit jumps off its current host, drops the dead body behind, uh, bonds with the bullet rides the bullet and then latches on to the old man and then spits the bullet away and then now venom has a new host and i was like and it's all done in like these four panels and it's beautiful i love this shot it's so so well done and it just looks like it's in slow motion the way it's drawn it's so cool uh so now venom has a new host and he's ready to battle at least for a little bit longer it is an old man so it doesn't have a ton of time but at least it'll be hopefully enough till uh you know to fight them off until wolverine heals 
Wolverine slowly starts to heal, and at this point, Vic and Frankie, they capture Patricia, and they're like, hey, we might have to, you know, start, come up with a new plan, because now the, the symbiote knows about us, it knows about our callers, so they call their HQ, and they're like, hey, what do we do? And their HQ's like, hey, go to plan B. So they grab Patricia, and they're like, all right, we're going to take her, we're going to go up in the ship, and we're going to drop a bomb. And I don't know if it was a nuke, it was nothing like that heavy duty, but it was at least enough to like wipe out maybe like 20 miles or so. So most of Voicey, if they haven't been you know evacuated at this point, uh, will probably go away, because this is a small town of like 150 people, tops. Uh, but a lot of things are spread out, so you kind of hope everyone got away in time. But it is a, a small enough bomb to where at least you know, render the, you know, the alien symbiote useless long enough for them to capture it. Uh, and then it'll also wipe out any potential hosts in the near area, uh, so that way it can't bond with Wolverine again. So they're heading up, getting ready to drop this bomb, and meanwhile Wolverine is like coming to, and the suit is fighting Venom, and they're getting into a big battle. And the suit gets, you know, once again, Venom grabs the suit, breaks them apart, and throws them to, you know, like like yesterday's trash. Like, he's just like, nah, dude, get out of here. You're nothing to me. And then Wolverine starts to heal again, and Venom's like, yay, all right, my host is back. So it's getting ready to go bond with them, and just at that moment, the bomb drops and basically wipes both of them out. So you see Wolverine's body, you know, reduced to just like bone for the most part. I think you just see his adamantium skeleton, which, at, you know, that sometimes drives me crazy when they do that in comics where it's like, all right, Wolverine is literally just an adamantium skeleton, but he's going to completely heal from that. I'm like, all right, I know it's suspension of disbelief. It's comics. It's, you know, it's not supposed to make sense to an extent, but that is something I'm like, oh, something of Wolverine should be left uh, you know, to grow back from because his bones are encased in metal. So how, you can't grow around the bones or whatever so i don't know it, it's a little nitpicky fanboy thing but uh but anyway you see him like burnt to nothing he's on the ground uh venom's nowhere you know around we don't know where he is and uh, and the suit you know puts himself back together after the bomb drops and he walks over to wolverine he's like all right so this is my last effort like i try to use patricia she's i don't know where she is now she could be dead the bomb could have dropped on her he doesn't know she was captured so he's like all right i gotta you know this guy improvises. That's his main thing. He knows how to improvise. So he goes over and he booby traps Wolverine. Uh, and then as Wolverine's slowly healing, he like puts something on him and he walks away and he's like, all right, now he's like, here goes everything. Like this is the last part of my plan. Hopefully it works. Uh, of course, you know, Venom is still alive. He found a way to like bond with a cockroach uh, and the cockroach, you know, survived the blast, obviously. And, uh, and then now Venom has, you know, went to a nest of cockroaches, bonded with all of them, sucked all the life he can out of them, and now he's back and he's ready to, you know, attack one more time and get one more chance at, you know, bonding with Wolverine, which he does do. And this puts everyone in a panic because now we have a Wolverine Venom on our hands to deal with. So the suit is trying to figure out what to do. He's waiting for his plan, you know, the right moment to enact his plan. Uh, meanwhile, Vic and Frankie, they come back down to uh you know to earth from their ship and they come out and they start you know engaging in battle with the wolverine venom uh, who easily he kills both of them easily and then as he kills them a, a call is put out like a distress call is put out for two more agents to come in so you're like all right so whoever vic and frankie work for two more agents are going to come and you know replace them and that sucks because i was like wow i was starting to like these two girls you know i wonder you know they're they're so replaced everyone's like so you know disposable in this book um but actually what shows up is another Frankie and another Vic. And it turns out that they're clones. And they don't they know they're clones, but they think they're the only two that have ever been made. So when these two new clones show up, they find the bodies of the old clones. It sends Vic, like she freaks out. She Vic is looking at this dead body of herself and she's like, wait a minute. We thought our originals were dead and we're the clones. We didn't know there was more agents. So she's contacting her HQ like, what's going on? And she's freaking out, like seeing this revelation. She's like, no, this is this can't be. Like, we're supposed to be the only ones. You you lied to us. Like, what is, you know, she's so her whole like world is crumbling at this moment. Uh, and meanwhile, Frankie doesn't, you know, she's still trying to deal with that, but she's also engaged in battle with Venom Wolverine, who kills her as well. So this Vic, she's, you know, left alive, and she's, you know, looks like she's going to be okay, uh, but she's still freaking out over what's going on. At this point, one person who's definitely been left out of a lot of this has been Patricia. She wakes up inside the ship, and the suit guy shows up, and he's like, hey, you're still alive, and she's like, yeah, what's going on out there? And he's like, Venom bonded with Wolverine, we're in trouble, but I have a plan, uh, so I need I need you, basically, so uh, so I'm sorry to do this to you, but, uh, but uh, you know, this is why I kept you alive, so I hope you forgive me. Uh, I promise I will make sure that nothing happens to you and that you survive this experience, and she's like, 
what the hell's about to go on? And he kneels down, he shaves her head, uh, because Vic and Frankie, they have shaved heads. Uh, so he shaves her head to kind of make her look like one of them. And he puts one of the venom collars on her. Uh, he takes it from like, you know, De Frankie's dead body, I think. And he puts it on Patricia and he's like, all right, we're going to lure the suit to bond with you. And I'm going to control it with, you know, my phone. Um, and so, and we're going to bring it back to my base and we're going to separate it from you you know, and keep you intact. And she's like, I don't, I don't like this. I don't like this plan. And he's like, look, I'm sorry. This is the only way this thing is going to kill a lot of innocent people. Do you trust me? And she's like, well, I, I don't really trust you, but if, if, you know, if you, if you think this is the best way to do this and save innocent lives, then yes, I, I will, I will, you know, agree to this plan. So she puts on the collar, she gets ready. She kind of looks like a, you know, a Vic and a Frankie. She puts on the outfit too. And the two of them, her and the suit, go out to battle Venom Wolverine. And at this point, like I said, Vic, the one who learned the truth about her being cloned, she's kind of out of the battle at this point, and she's questioning her life and questioning her existence and everything. And uh, and the other two, the suit and Patricia, advance on Venom, and they try to convince Venom, like, hey, you got to bond with her. And uh, and Venom's like, no, like I have a good host here, you know, I'm ready. And that's when the suit reveals his plan. He goes, yeah but I booby-trapped your current host. And he presses a button on his phone, and a bomb inside Wolverine's chest goes off and obliterates Wolverine for the most part and obliterates the suit. And after Wolverine goes down, it only leaves Patricia because the cockroaches are dead, you know, the Fix and Frankies are dead, except the one Vic who got away or isn't around. Uh, so, you know, obviously the Venom suit can't bond with the suit, the guy, because he's nanotech robots. Uh, he's not organic life. So uh, so it just leaves Patricia. So, you know, the suit does bond with her, the ven or the Venom, you know, costume does bond with her. Wolverine is destroyed for the most part. He will heal, obviously. But Venom is like, I'm tired of this. I don't have time for this. We got to get out of here. And the suit guy has pretty much been cut in half uh, by the Wolverine Venom. So he's just a head. So he's like, all right, well, if I can bond with Patricia, I can at least get out of here. Uh, but he doesn't see the collar. So he bonds with her and then the collar gets activated. And Patricia grabs the phone and is in control of it herself. And she picks up the suit, like the guy, like, you know, the top half of his body. It's kind of like Bishop. It reminds me of Bishop with aliens, especially the way he gets ripped in half. It's like it's through a wall with the claws coming through, much like the, the queen tail coming through the door in the ship so it just reminded me a lot of aliens which was pretty cool um so anyway uh so you know uh patricia now she's in control of the the, the venom costume and it's bonded with her and now she's heading out into the wilderness and she leaves the head or top half of the suit guy behind and she like webs him up with venom goo and she's like look you got to stay here i don't want you coming after me uh, I'm going to go, you know, I'm going to take the suit. And I'm going to find out how to destroy it. And if it destroys me with it, then so be it. And so she grabs his phone. She's in complete control of Venom now. And she wanders off into the wilderness. And that's kind of how this book ends. Although we do see a conclusion with Wolverine. He does heal. He wakes up and he's kind of like, you know, it's, I don't know. It's kind of a weird ending. He wakes up and looks out and he's like, well, I guess, you know, I guess it's the battle's over and that sucks, you know, whatever. But at the same time, he does find one of the, uh, nanobots from the suit guy and he picks it up and he looks at it and he says I've seen one of these before and he goes Reed Richards what are you up to and that moment I actually kind of like because a lot of times Wolverine is kind of seen as like or written as like the dumb guy in a way and he kind of can be I guess but he does have some sense to him and he has been in the military and he knows you know how to track things and he, and he, he has a good me you know memory despite you know not knowing where his past you know where he came from but the memories over the past few years are pretty solid in his head. And so he has been a member of the Fantastic Four. He has been part of S.H.I.E.L.D. And he's, you know, worked with Nick Fury on stuff. So he has been, he has seen information and privilege stuff that maybe even most of the X-Men haven't seen. So I kind of like this moment. I thought it added a little bit to the character of Wolverine where he recognized this nanobot and he knew it was something that Reed Richards worked on. And I wish that brought Wolverine back into the story later on where he continued to investigate this because that's kind of how Wolverine is. He will see something till the end of it. And uh, he isn't. He never pops back up. And it kind of always bummed me out about this storyline as I kind of wish he was a little bit more involved in the ending. Uh, but at least we get some cool Wolverine stuff here in the back battle between him and Venom is really awesome. Paco Medina drew drew it really well. I thought it was great. I thought the, the, the scenes were great. The angles were great. It just really showed the veracity of these two creatures fighting each other. And I thought he nailed it on every page where these two fought each other. Uh, but then we also cut to uh, New York City and we see a guy named Bob. And it turns out Bob is the the HQ. He's the guy that Vic and Frankie were reporting to. And now he has a Vic that disappeared in the field. 
uh, presumed dead because her collar got destroyed and uh, and her you know systems went down or something like that. So we assume she's dead, even though we know that she is not. She's just off the grid right now. Uh, and then meanwhile, he you know awakens a new Vic and new Frankie and is like, all right, you're gonna go in and you're gonna keep tracking the suit. It's on Patricia Robertson now, so I need you to continue the mission of tracking it. Uh, and it is eventually gonna pro po possibly head back this way uh, because as it you know you know as it figures out who it is and what it is the, the you know the alien venom as it figures out what it is it's going to eventually maybe come back to us so bob's like be on the lookout for that and so uh and then as the book ends you know vic and the new vic and frankie are like so so what's you know what, what's our next plan and he's like don't worry i got it all under control he's like uh you know the end is coming very soon our end game is coming very soon and as he's saying this you reveal that he is in new york and spider-man is you know swinging by in new york city as he's like looking out the window and so this mysterious bob guy we're going to find out all about him in the next run which is called patterns uh which is issues 11 12 and 13 of this book um, and it's just like a short brief story so we'll talk about that in the next episode and that'll be hopefully a shorter episode although there is a lot to digest so we might be talking a lot more about um, the revelations we get because we're going to learn pretty much everything uh, about this new venom in the next three issues but for this one we know reed richards involved we now we got introduced to bob vic and frankie are these clones that keep getting sent out to track it down and trap it somehow so there's a lot of new things we learned in this as well uh, but we still don't have all the answers and that's what the next book is all about and meanwhile, Patricia, she does make a call. She finds like this, uh, the number to some guy she knew in high school who she kind of used to date. And she's like, hey, look, you know, you were a great guy. You're the only person I can trust. You're the only number I still have in memory. I'm glad you answered. Can you give my, a message to my mom? I got into some trouble and, uh, you know, just tell her everything's going to be fine, but tell her that I love her. So it's like this really nice moment where it's like this character moment where she's like, I just want to get a message to my mom. Unfortunately, that call is being tracked uh, by Vic and Frankie uh, and also Bob in New York. So they're now they're definitely on to her. Uh, but then also the suit guy is going to be able to track that too through his connections. And we're going to find out who he works for and what he is and where he came from in the next run as well. So again, a lot of answers in patterns, and we're going to get to that very soon. So what do you guys think of this? You know, have you read this book? Have you read Run? Uh, let me know if you have in the comments below. And if you haven't, you know, and you were okay with spoilers, let me know what you think of this down below. And if you have any questions, things that I maybe didn't cover, you know, let me know if, you, if you're unclear on stuff, I will answer them down below. I really appreciate you guys sticking with me this week. I'm sorry this episode's a little late. Uh, but hopefully, you know, it's up now and hopefully you enjoy it and I will have patterns uh, for you tomorrow and then I will also have the final story twist for you on Thursday. So definitely be on the lookout for that. Thanks for watching my show. As always, like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff and I'll see you all in the future. Peace.